And in Obama's comments about uh, no more torture, they've left a gigantic loophole for rendition to continue, and CIA's rule, rules on torture are very unclear. And so if we are going to go forward on this, we need to do several things. We need to, first off, uh, hold these lawyers accountable. Uh, they should lose their bar licenses. Second, we need to have public hearings so people in the United States know what occurred and can have a real debate about this issue. I have no doubt that if there's a date, debate held, we will end that debate with the recognition that torture was wrong. We'll go back to our roots. We were a country leading the effort to get the Geneva Convention uh, passed and signed, which prohibited torture. We were the country that led, led the effort on the Convention Against Torture that was signed by, by Ronald Reagan, President Reagan. Uh, and by the way, that convention requires the prosecution of torture. So President Obama is violating that treaty by not looking back at these torturers and holding them accountable. And after we uh, hold these public hearings and have this debate, we also need to have a special prosecutor appointed so that the rule of law can be applied after the facts are investigated. The toxicity of, po of torture is a poison in our body politic, and there's only one way to remove it, and it's not to sweep it under the rug. We have to look at the facts, understand what happened, and then hold those accountable through the rule of law. And that's what all three of us here are advocating for. That's what many other people have been talking about, and it's time for us to proceed in that direction uh, with as rapidly as we can. With that, I'll be happy to take, uh, we'll, we'll be happy to take your questions for any of us. Yeah. Um, could you just do some of the nuts and bolts here? Um, why these two at this point? Who else have you filed against? And what is the process that we should be seeing in the days or weeks or months ahead? How long do those take? And have you been successful? Um, we, the first 12 we filed um, a couple of months ago, uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, they were filed against Department of Justice lawyers, including uh, the attorney generals that served under Bush Cheney. Uh, they were against White House counsel, including Alberto Gonzalez, who also served as attorney general, and against people like Jay Bybee, uh, who uh, wrote the, the memos, uh, and Bradbury, and the, the people have been well known. Um, and so the process that that will go for go through is a, a um, essentially a secret or private uh, review by the bar councils and that, that could take anywhere from months to uh, more than a year um, I think a lot of the uh, uh, councils are waiting to see what the Department of Justice is going to do uh, in their memo that they've been working on now for five years on whether or not uh, uh, some Yes, the Office of Professional Responsibility memo to determine whether or not the uh, Department of Justice lawyers who wrote these memos should be uh, held accountable and lose their bar license. I think when that happens, that will move things forward more quickly. Uh, Does filing this compel a review? Yes, it does. There will be definitely, there will be a review. A review is required after, the, after this is filed. And um, we've, today we've d decided, we, we didn't focus on the intelligence agencies in the first filings, and we are now doing so. And we particularly wanted to highlight that two of the lawyers are still working in the federal government, and it's the same process. Uh, it'll be, uh, you know, a multi-month review process. And by the way, if they if they do find that the, um, the lawyers deserve to lose their license, they will be allowed to have a public hearing, which would be an interesting opportunity. In the D.C. bar, there's a three-person panel that initially reviews the the the, the, the decision, two lawyers and one non-lawyer. Uh, and then there's another appeal after that. So all these are, those are all public uh, possibilities. And we also have the right to appeal as well. And since bars are done on a state-by-state -state basis, right. do you, if, it, if you're successful in D.C., do you then pursue them in other states, or is this nationwide? No, these are state-by-state -state basis. So if we want to pursue uh, their licenses that they may have in other states, we'd have to file there as well. should know that in Watergate there were similar bar complaints filed against some of the a White House officials, John Ehrlichman, Eagle Krogh, they did lose their licenses. And you may recall also in Bill Clinton's case, there was also a bar complaint filed. I think he had his license suspended for five years. It wasn't, you know, three or four years in order to adjudicate um, Mr. Clinton's case, but I think that was a settlement. But this is not unprecedented. Do you want to use the microphone for these uh, questions, Kyle? Does that matter? Uh, you wish we could use the microphone. <coughs> There's one behind it, yourself. right there. Uh, David DeSola, CNN. A um, couple of questions. Um, anything you do with these bar, these bar complaints, would that, that would be separate, completely independent, what they decide to do or not from any potential prosecutions, whether, regardless of whether they ultimately get carried through. And you said you've gone out, you've filed complaints against the Justice Department, the White House, and now with these two intelligence agencies, are there any other complaints coming up, other agencies, et cetera? 
And do you have, and do you have any timetable, any more specific timetable besides just weeks and months or? They, the timetable really is not in our control, what the Bar Association is going to do, so that is in their control. And uh, so we can't give you a more pinpointed timetable on that, for that, that going forward. But yes, these bar complaints are totally separate from any kind of action, whether it's a truth commission or independent counsel. Those are all independent steps you can take. Uh, this bar challenge, we hope, is kind of an effort to bring these issues up more t in the public, to put more pressure on, to have action taken, and to show uh, that there are people who really believe the rule of law needs to be applied to these issues. Uh, this was a very large program, this torture program, and it involved multiple agencies and lots of disputes within each agency. The FBI decided not to participate uh, in it, and uh, and so the um, uh, you know they, they they took a different position the other agencies did, and and as a result, there are other lawyers who were involved in this decision making process, and there there will be future complaints. We're still investigating others as we file these complaints. We get contacts from. Uh, lawyers and advocacy groups saying, how about this person and that person, and we investigate that and decide whether or not that's worth pursuing. And uh, there will be, um, I expect, future complaints. Our hope is that there will be some lawyers who recognize that it's good to get on the right side of the law, and that the way to do that is to uh, tell the truth about what happened, to, to let the public know what kind of debate was going on inside, release memorandums that they wrote at the time uh, describing what was going on, uh, you know, to, to really to allow this to be fleshed out so people know what occurred. And so one of our hopes is that lawyers will start to come forward and get on the right side of the law by telling the, telling the truth. Kevin, um, we're also researching a couple of other CIA lawyers, uh, uh, Robert Edinger, um, E-A-T-I-N-G-E-R, um, also a Paul Kelbaugh, he was a deputy legal counsel in the counterterrorism section of the CIA. And Stephen Hermes um, was a lawyer involved in the uh, decision to move forward with the destruction of the CIA tapes. Um, also, two, uh, two lawyers in the Department of Justice, or, uh, John Yu's colleagues, Robert Delahunty and Patrick Philbin. We have not yet filed complaints with those, against those two lawyers, but we plan to. You have something you want to say? Yeah. Uh, just wanted to, to point out, you know, we, when we think about the extent to which these uh, ethics complaints or other measures we might take as a civil polity to draw attention to the issue relate to the formal uh, mechanisms of prosecution. It, I just want to point out that the, the, the acts of checks and balances being asserted by our government are often under-inclusive. You could see, for instance, in the, in the passage of the Detainee Treatment Act or the Military Commissions Act, Congress affirmatively ratifying what if done only by the executive, would be clearly illegal. Under Justice Jackson's opinion in the steel seizure cases, when you have multiple branches that reinforce each other's authority, within the domestic system, it enhances the legitimacy of the act, right? That's why the seizure of steel mills in the Korean War by how President Truman was rejected by the Supreme Court in those cases because it was a unilateral act in violation of, a, of an act of Congress. Here we have Congress acting to reinforce the executive acts Within our system, what this indicates is a political process problem. The principles that are embedded in our Constitution, in the international treaties, in our nation's historical role in the world, all of them have been violated by multiple different branches of the government. So the ethics complaints, the letters we submitted to the Intel and Judiciary Committees last week, a range of other actions, uh, grassroots actions in 10 different cities last Thursday and Friday, all aim to basically take the issue into the court of public opinion, to say we the people are trying to circumvent the abdication of our governmental representatives of their responsibility to investigate and prosecute these abuses. And, and the last thing I'll just say too is there are international actors in the mix as well. There is a complaint in Spain. Uh, it, it's, it's an interesting set of affairs when our former officials are not- Prosecution in Italy? Yeah, m m several European countries. And th there is universal jurisdiction under international human rights laws to prosecute these, these officials. So if, if the individuals that Kevin's talking about or other former senior officials were to travel abroad, they would be at risk of being picked up and prosecuted in other countries. That should indicate to us where the real state of play is and how far our own discourse has been shifted off a legitimate basis.